Everybody clap your Oh, come on, is it all right? We're taking back this morning. Somebody put two hands. Can y'all feel it like this this morning?
Good morning. Good morning, City of Refuge, and happy 29th year anniversary. I am Doris I. Allen, uh, Mother Lucky, Dr. Lucky, and I'm here to welcome you. Welcome to the City of Refuge, United Church of Christ. And I'll never forget my, my being welcomed here uh, to this wonderful City of Refuge 24 years ago. Um, I had parked, uh, had to park at the hotel across the street from the church in San Francisco. So I went up the stairs and asked the elders at the door how long the service would last. So I could be sure I had enough money to pay the, the $12 parking fee, uh, $12 an hour parking fee at the hotel. And one of the, the elders, in fact, it was uh, uh, Pastor Raymond Glover said, uh, Oh, we don't last very long. We just, yeah, yeah, I'll be out of here in maybe less, less than a couple of hours. And the other elder, who was Paul Prober, by the way, Diva, she said, um, he said, um, oh, don't tell her that. And then to me, uh, Paul said, it lasts until God gets through with us. Well, I felt so welcome. And I haven't left in 24 of these 29 years. And I found out then, and I know it's true, we are a ministry of restoration. We are intentionally radically inclusive. We welcome all persons regardless of race, color, ancestry, age, gender, ability, sexual or affectional, affectional orientation. We celebrate the creator's diversity. We worship Christ and we welcome persons from all faiths which harmonize with the ministry of Jesus Christ. Reverend Dr. Yvette Flunder, presiding bishop of the Fellowship of Affirming Ministries and senior pastor of Refuge Ministries, the pastoral team and entire congregation, thank you for welcome, worshiping with us today. And if you are a first time visitor or have not been with us in a while, please let us know by typing Hashtag visitor in the chat. And please, refugees, please show some love for our visitors and welcome back to those who are returning. And now Shannon will give us our announcements for the week. Thank you. Shannon. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. What an exciting weekend we have had as we celebrate the 29th anniversary of this amazing, amazing ministry. I've got some announcements for you today, so we'll get started with that so we can move on for this awesome program. We are looking for people to join our team. There's a lot of work that goes into preparing our services for Sunday, and we're looking for all the creatives out there, the tech people, the musicians, the, the artists that will take you all. Just go ahead and get in contact with us. Please reach out to Reverend Ann Jefferson at Ms. Ann J, J A E at gmail.com, or lay Pastor Marilyn Fowler at Marilyn F465 at yahoo.com. We want the creatives. Please join us. And of course, we're still in a time of COVID, unfortunately, and sometimes cost for testing is a challenge, but we have three locations here that are free. Uh, if you live in the Oakland area, the Roots Community Health Center is available. Uh, we have some uh, hours information on display as well. San Leandro Marina Community Center is open and they are giving free testing as well as the Martin Luther King Jr. Youth Center in Berkeley, California. So that's all of our announcements for today. Sit back and relax and enjoy the rest of our service. We're gonna move on now with a beautiful worship song sung by Lorraine Ganey and Miley Caho. The name of the song is So Will I. Be blessed today. There at the 
start before the beginning of time With no point of reference You spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of light And as you speak a hundred billion galaxies are born In the vapor of your breath the planet's born If the stars were made to worship so will I So Speak in vain, no syllable empty or void. For once you have spoken, all nature and science follow the sound of your voice. And as you speak, a heart. Your breath evolving in pursuit of what you said. If it all reveals your nature, so will I. I can see your heart and everything you say, every pain it's got. And as you speak, 
A hundred billion failures disappear Where you lost your life so I could find it here If you left the grave behind you so alive I can see your heart You gladly show surrender, so will I. I can see your heart in a billion different ways. Every precious one, a child you die to say. If you give your life to love, then so will I. Like you would again a hundred billion times but what measure could amount to your desire you're the one who never leaves the one behind like you would You would again a hundred good times, but what measure could amount to your desire? You're the one who never leaves the one behind. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful song. I'm unmuted. Hello, City of Refuge. What a beautiful song and what a great segue into co-creating with God, a legacy of service. Happy 29th anniversary, family and friends. I'm so grateful for this opportunity to briefly highlight a few of the many ways in which the City of Refuge has co-created with God over the years. First, I must pay homage to Bishop Flander for her vision for the City of Refuge as a place for worship for those of us seeking radical inclusivity. And to Mother Shirley Miller for supporting that vision. Just a few of the ways in which co-creation has shown up in City of Refuge over the years. The Arca Refuge, which provided tra transitional housing for persons living with HIV and AIDS and for youth, homeless youth, the Mother of Peace Orphanage Ministry in Africa, Hands on Heart and Outreach Ministry for Disenfranchised People Living in the San Francisco Tenderloin area, the Word of Mouth Food Pantry, which began in San Francisco and continues to bless people with a monthly food distribution in Oakland at City of Refuge, Outreach and ministry at the Women's Place Shelter in San Francisco, South of Market. Traditional holiday meals for the homeless. The City of Refuge Art Studio, which has been a place of creativity and healing. And there have been countless other ways in which the City of Refuge members have co-created with God through service. Bishop Flanders' co-creation continue, continued with the formation of the Fellowship of Affirming Ministry, which has grown into an international ministry with churches throughout the United States, in Africa, Asia, and Mexico. Let us continue to heed the call of co-creating and creating legacies of service. When God is speaking to you about sharing your gifts that you cre can create positive change in your church, in your community, and in the world, step up and leave your legacy. God is still speaking. Amen. And thank you all co-creators. The next person you will hear from will be our own Pastor Tony Dunbar. 
Hello, City of Refuge friends and family. I'm Pastor Tony from City of Refuge, and it is a rare privilege to elect someone so completely well-suited to their office. Today, we are celebrating Minister Raymond Glover's appointment as lay pastor of the Department of Education with a special affiliation for new members. Minister Raymond, you have been faithful in your service for the education department of this church for over 20 years. You've been instant in season and out of season, but I almost regret to tell you that this appointment carries with it even more weight, more scrutiny, more and more varied responsibility, more accountability, but it also carries great honor and trust. Minister Raymond, is it really your desire to accept this appointment as lay pastor at City of Refuge UCC, serving the education department and especially serving our new members? If so, you may respond yes with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And now, Minister O, oh, lay pastor Raymond Glover. Do you have any remarks for your refuge family? Uh, yes. <laughs> to God be the glory for all he, she has done. Uh, give an eye to Bishop Flunder, Mother Miller, the Shepherd's Table, the Minister's Board, and the entire City of Refuge family for your extravagant love and grace and kindness toward me. Uh, my heart is full. I'm extremely grateful for this moment in time, for this opportunity to continue to serve the body of Christ at City of Refuge. Uh, being at City of Refuge for 28 years and supporting in the um, new members department for 27 years has truly been a humbling experience and a joy for me. Pastor Tony, you, have, you are an awesome teacher and a mentor. I am privileged to serve under you and your leadership and guidance in the Christian Education Department. Uh, with your prayers and the grace of God, I will serve in this capacity to the best of my ability. City of Refuge is my home, a light to the world, and a refuge to me. I'm thankful, grateful, and blessed for this consecration. I love you all. We love you, Lay Pastor Raymond. And believe me, this is not an end to anything. This is a new beginning. God bless you, son. God bless Amen. you. I love you. And thank you. thank you. The next voice you'll hear will be that of Minister Ramon Jackson with our Ministry of Giving. Good morning. And now it is time for our giving moment. At the City of Refuge UCC, we strive daily, even through a global pandemic, no less, to empower, enrich, and renew disenfranchised and marginalized communities, both locally and abroad. It is through generous donations from you, our family, friends, visitors, and viewers, that local refuge programs, such as the Word of Mouth Food Pantry, LGBTQ and differently abled education and inclusion work, national social justice and equality activism through TFAM, the Fellowship of Affirming Ministries, as well as our missions and ministries in Mexico, Asia, Africa, and the United Kingdom can continue to make room at the table for everyone. We invite you to become a part of our efforts in providing practical, no harm solutions to critical community and world issues. No donation is too small to make a difference and giving is simple. You can use text to give by texting 510-257-9001. Entering the amount that you'd like to give, pressing send and following the prompts through Easy Tithe. Or you can use PayPal at www.paypal.me forward slash C-O-R-U-C-C. Or Cash App at dollar sign C-O-R-U-C-C. -C. We thank you in advance for your gifts and partnering with us and making someone's life brighter when things aren't so bright. As we give you time to make your donations, you will be listening to Chosen by Mazaru. Uh, 
Got your stuff, sister. I'm next door to you. Don't forget. Yes. I got all my stuff too, baby. Yes. I have all Ooh. my stuff because you know. All of it. Uh, mm -hmm. Very Where mama? Where mama at? Mama? M mama, you over there? You over there? I'm over here. Right here. Over here. Right here. You see me? I got you, girl. You see me? Oh, I, I got you, girl. Uh, it is new technology. New technology. I'm trying to figure everything out. Do you I see still me? I ain't got figured out. You know, oh. I don't really know what's going on over here with this refuse and them uh, them refugees. Mm -hmm. I guess I, I guess they had to put everything on the dot com. Now we have to put okay. everything in the book. Okay. Oh. Oh. Yeah, sister. Mm -hmm. So, so sister, we got to say something to the bishop. To the bishop. Uh -oh. The uh -huh. bishop. Uh -huh. We got to say happy anniversary, baby, to the bishop because yes. I'm stuck in this room. I'm so tired of being stuck in this room, girl. So let's get this over with. Okay, okay, okay. Well, all right. Well, well, y'all, y'all, y'all know who we are. Yeah. 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 If you yeah. don't know who we are, say you know who. now. You know now. We are the Gospel Flamingos. Mm hmm. What know? Second back, Arkansas. Second back. Right. Second back. That's right. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And mm -hmm. we came up here today to help wish y'all a very happy anniversary. Happy, happy anniversary. Mm -hmm. And we know that we in strange times around this uh, 
this uh pan, mm-hmm, rather this this this, this, uh pan situation demic. Um, but mm-hmm. we couldn't miss it. We couldn't miss it. We came yeah. holy and sanctified holy and, and clean yeah, and still and, and making mm-hmm. sure that we don't pass nothing through the screen. That's mm-hmm. right, baby. That's right. This yeah. wrong, this yeah. what That's they right. call it, sister. They call it the what? The corona. Is it right? No, baby. I drink corona. I drink corona. corona. Oh, I don't know what corona? they talking about. I got it. Mm-hmm. All right, baby. Yes. 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 It's the Rona, not the mm-hmm. Corona. Oh, oh not the Rona. Okay. Rona. All right, my bad. Listen, we Listen. had to come through and make sure we said hello in spite of us not being able to gather. Yeah. 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 We just had yeah. to come and love on you, Bishop. Bishop and Mother Mel. My bad, and Mother Shirley Neville. We, we thank y'all for y'all's tenacity. Ain't that right, sister and mama? That's yes, right. Because yes. I well, love me some Shirley Miller. I me, love me some I love Shirley her. Miller. I love her. I love yeah. her. Where's that, that Ian? Where's that bishop? Where's the bishop? Bishop, where's Papa, bishop. mama? Where's oh, Papa? Well, well, I woke him up early this morning. Early. What happened? What happened? I even fixed his breakfast. I don't know where he went. He might be out in that chicken coop somewhere, Ooh. you know? He, Lord he, Jesus. He, Oh well, you God. know, well, you know, Bishop loves chicken. We got to send her a chicken. We got to yeah, send her a chicken. A a yeah, I send her a big, fresh, fat chicken. Yes, yeah. I will. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. That'd yeah. be real nice. Yeah, That'd be real nice. nice. Where is that? What's her name? E and J. What's her name? E and listen, that Elizabeth and Jefferson. Where's she at? Where she at? I know she around there somewhere. You know she over there behind that uh screen, behind that pew over there causing havoc. I feel so bad for the record. And, and probably wear purple too. Ooh, ooh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Listen, mm-hmm. listen, refugees, before we roll up out of here, because we, we rolling. Rolling. We rocking, okay. Listen, I just need y'all to remember that holiness ooh. is still right. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Yes, you know. baby, and it's next to cleanliness, honey. It, cleanliness. Come on. Hallelujah. Make sure, make sure y'all out here Ooh. staying safe. Yeah. Okay, y'all make sure y'all got y'all masks, and yeah. I dare not see y'all gathering in public anytime soon. No, no. Keep no spraying, problem. keep spraying, keep Come spraying, on. baby. Keep spraying Spray. and praying. Keep spraying Ooh. and praying, and we Ooh. love you. We love you. We y'all love so you. Much. God bless yes, you. God yes. bless you. Dear Refuge, happy 29th year anniversary. Happy 29th. We love Bishop and Mother. Ah, Mother. Hey. Hallelujah. Holiness is yes. next to cleanliness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless y'all. Hey. Amen. Hmm. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Mm. Wow. We thank God. Oh, my goodness. Listen. We thank God for spraying and praying <laughs> through this intense time of pain situation demic, of pain situation demic. My goodness, our family <laughs> from, from Chicken Back, Arkansas, we thank God for their travels and that they live where they live. Amen. What a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Oh my goodness, you know, nowhere but City of Refuge, nowhere but City of Refuge. I just want to um, say good morning and and also happy anniversary to City of Refuge and um, to all of those who uh, are members and all of those who are um, not uh, list members, but are definite supporters of City of Refuge. We love you and we are so grateful that you are with us and have been with us over the time. We, we're grateful for our haters too, amen? Praise the Lord. Um, I uh, am here to introduce um, one of our just loves and uh, this brother can really um, usher in the Holy Spirit. Uh, I wanna invite you to just take a minute during while um, Andrew is playing to think about um, how great God's faithfulness has been to you, particularly uh, during this time that we have been sheltering in place and dealing with all of the things that have come with it. The faithfulness of God has not changed. 
what if anything has changed is what has changed is our availability to God's faithfulness. So I want to introduce to you, present to others, Andrew Jameson.
God bless you. Andrew Barnes Jameson. Not only is Great Is Thy Faithfulness my favorite hymn, but you played it under a special and peculiar anointing today. And I want to say thank you. You brought the presence of God and the angels <laughs> into this time of worship. What a gift you are to the body of Christ. It is my privilege and opportunity to introduce our 29th anniversary speaker today, Bishop William Barber is a great preacher, great minister, and a political activist. He is the president and senior lecturer at Repairers of the Breach and the co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival. He has served as a member of the National Board of the NAACP and chair of its Legislative Political Action Committee. From 2006 to 2017, he served as president of the NAACP's North Carolina State Chapter, the largest in the Southern United States and the second largest chapter in the country. He has pastored Greenleaf Christian Church. And we love our family there. Greenleaf Christian Church Disciples of Christ in Goldsboro, North Carolina since 1993. And he was consecrated to the Holy Office of Bishop in the Lord's Church by the College of Affirming Bishops and Faith Leaders at our convocation, the Fellowship of Affirming Ministries. I had the privilege of being asked to be his chief consecrator. It's a great joy and a great opportunity to lay hands on this great man. He is my for real brother my friend, my leaning post, my very late night conversation partner and confident and prayer partner. And is with unique and real deep joy that we welcome Bishop William Barber as our preacher today for the 29th anniversary of City of Refuge United Church of Christ. God bless you. God, we thank you so much. We haven't been able to you just play softly. Lord, we're so thankful and we love you so. We've got a place that we can literally run to. We don't have to take our time. We don't have to be afraid. We can literally run to it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We can hasten. God, we ask your help today as we preach your word. We thank you today for the ministry of Bishop Yvette Flunder. For all, God, you have used her to be and to do. And we thank you, God, for the ministry of the City of Refuge. 29 years, founder and people, people and founder have been together serving you. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you for that. We thank you for the ministry in Oakland. We thank you for the ministry in California. We thank you for the ministry in the United States. We thank you for the ministry around the world. And we thank you that every day they are teaching people there is a place you can run to. You can hurry up and come to. And it is the presence of our God through Jesus Christ. Now help us and hold us for whenever you call men and women to preach, you take the risk of putting treasure in trash, treasure in an earthen vessel, that the excellency of the power might be of thee and not of us. Hide us behind the cross, cover us in your blood, fill us with your spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, come, preaching, hearing, and teaching power in Jesus' name. Amen. I am um, greatly humbled when I received the call 
to share with the city of refuge and with my bishop, presiding bishop, Flunda, on this day. I so much so that I called. I said, are you sure you want the country man to come? Uh, I counted an honor that she would have me on this prime number day. You know, y'all are in a prime number anniversary. 29 is a prime number. You can't find two numbers that'll make 29. That makes it prime. You know, like Optimus Prime. You all are prime church now. <laughs> 29 years. 29 years. Only way you can get 29 is 29 times 1. Prime number. And we thank you for that God has raised you up for prime time. If we ever needed a bishop who believes in radical hospitality. If we ever needed a church to teach others about radical hospitality. God has called you in the 29th year to prime time for this moment. This moment where there's so much pain and yet there's so much potential for us to change and be better. There's so much hurt, but also there is yet hope if we will lean into what you all have taught for years about radical hospitality and the love and care for all people. So I bless you, I, the entire Greenleaf Christian family and all of the people who watch us around the world. We thank God for the city of refuge and know that the world is better. The kingdom of God is served better because of you, Bishop Flunder. You've meant so much to me in my life. I, over these last years, you have touched me in ways you don't even understand. And I so appreciate <clears throat> our calls and conversations and the way you helped me think <clears throat> and have helped me be like iron sharpening iron. And to your members, I, I've been on planes when we were traveling. And I said that uh, the folk at City of Refuge and, and Affirming Ministry are like, um, are like the X-Men and women. Uh, they just show up. And I was on a plane one time, got on, I was real tired, and uh, somebody tapped me from behind and said, City of Refuge, we got you, don't worry about it, we got you back. <laughs> I was somewhere else, and uh, I was dragging my bag along. Somebody came along and said, I'm with, I'm with the affirming ministries, I'm with T-Fam, got you, got you back, got you back. Bishop, we got you, we got you. Help me to the car, help my people. And it is an amazing thing to see people who just love one another and love people because they are the creation of God. I want to um, lift up two passages of scripture and then I want to talk about a city of refuge for even them or a church of refuge for even them. Numbers chapter 35 verse 15 in one of the more modern versions says these six cities shall be for refuge for the people of Israel and for the stranger and for the sojourner among them, that anyone who kills any person may, in, without intent may flee there and be protected. Numbers chapter 35, verse 15. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, Keep you justice and judgment, for my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing it either. Neither let the son of the stranger or the immigrant that hath joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, the Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. And neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbath and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant, even unto them I will give mine house and with my walls a place and a name better than of the sons and daughters. Hmm. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Also, the sons and daughters, the sons of the stranger that joined themselves to the Lord to serve him, to love the name of the Lord, to be his servant, everyone that keepeth 
the Sabbath from polluting and taking hold of my covenant, even them, even them, will I bring into my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. A city of refuge, a church of refuge for even them. Originally, when I first looked at this and saw this phrase, city of refuge, mentioned in the scripture, I noticed that the city of refuge, they were like geographic safe houses within and among the people of Israel. Under the law, Deuteronomy, Numbers, Leviticus, it was required that when the land was um, partialed out, partitioned, there had to be cities of refuge in the land where God's people live. There had to be special cities dedicated and run by special people. Couldn't just be anybody. Only the Levites, only the priests, only those who had the understanding and the authority to deal with the altar and the holy, holy things could run and guide the cities of refuge. And the cities of refuge are distinctly placed by God's direction in the land for those people that other people wanted to kill or destroy because they didn't like them. The city of refuge was designed to keep people from being killed especially those who without malice or intent had killed someone for various reasons. And there were those who felt like some people had to die in order for them to live and be happy. And God said, I can't have that. And so I need a place they can run to. I need a place where there are some folk mature enough in the spirit to handle those that other people would rather see dead. And they were called cities of refuge. And I want six of them in the land. And every one of them must be protected by grace, mercy, and the covering of God. And the religious leader, the Levite, the bishop, if you will, of those cities must ensure that the people other folk want dead, if God can live. The people that other folk want dead. The people that other folk feel they have a right to kill. The people that other folk feel they can destroy and society will be all right. The people that some folk feel don't meet their standard for living. God says there must be six cities of refuge. If I was going to stay here alone, I would ask parenthetically, has anybody ever wanted you dead just because they didn't like you? 
They didn't care about you. But as I was studying, Bishop, I noticed that the concept, the concept now, because in theology, sometimes you have what the text literally say, and then you have what you can surmise from critical analysis. And I noticed that the concept of a place of refuge, a place of grace, a place of mercy, a community of protection was expanded when you started reading into the prophets. For instance, in Isaiah 11, it actually says the king should be a city of refuge. That's a sermon for another day. But if I was preaching a political service or was not so much a political service, was going there in this service, I would, I would show how anybody who's in leadership that is not using that power and strength to create refuge for those who are worn and tired and weary, they are actually engaging in a form of political malpractice. Because Isaiah 11 says that the kingdom said people in power are supposed to be a refuge. Those that are hurting, those that are thrown away, those that are pushed down, those that are made to feel different, those that are immigrants, are really not supposed to fear a president or fear a leader or fear a politician. True, true political power should be used to provide refuge for those who are worn and sick and broken and tired. But that's a sermon for another day. I kept reading. And when you get over to uh, third Isaiah, you know, Isaiah has one Isaiah, two Isaiah, three Isaiah. And Isaiah one was written by Isaiah, but the second two and three that follow Isaiah 40, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and mount up on wings as eagles, run and not get weary, walk and not faint. Isaiah two and then Isaiah three were written by those Isaiah trained the school of prophets, who continued to write in his name. And when you get to the third Isaiah, Isaiah 56, particularly, an interesting expansion of the concept of a city of refuge happens. Because in Isaiah 56, it's not just cities. Six cities that should be a place of refuge. But the concept expands and says the Lord's house, the temple, the place built for God is required to be a refuge, a city of refuge, a safe place. Think about it. The Hebrew people had been through 70 years of exile. They had been through 400 years of slavery earlier. And they know what it means to be rejected. They know what it means to be dejected. And God says, when you rebuild the temple for me, it must be more than bricks and mortars. It must be more than a priest and some choirs and an altar for sacrifices. It must be a place for even them. That's refuge. God says in Isaiah 56, my house shall be a house of prayer. My house shall be a house for even them. Uh, if I could pause a minute, that's why it's really a, a counterintuitive particularly for people who are black to be in church and then not like people and want people in since we too came through 400 years of slavery and we too have come through exile and we ought to know what it's like to be rejected and dejected and we should never be about the business of rejecting and dejecting anybody. We should always have a sign up that says to people we want even them. <laughs> And this is the message of the church. This is all I come to say. I didn't come to worry you long today. 
I just came to say, Bishop, on this pr in prime time. City of Refuge is in prime time. And in prime time, you all got to keep teaching. Bishop, you've got to keep preaching. Church, you've got to keep telling that first, a church of refuge for even them is a required place. It's not optional. If you're going to be a house of prayer, God's house of prayer, it's not optional. In fact, true holiness is only the kind of holiness that welcomes. True covenant with God is only the kind of covenant that welcomes others into the covenant. We pollute the holiness of God when we try to make God's house a place for certain people. Whenever we try to make God's house a place for only certain people, we are messing around with strange fire around the altar. The kind of holiness that we must have is that radical welcoming. My house shall be a house of prayer for all people. And, and notice in Isaiah 56 how, how blunt this is. Notice that the, the, the prophet is told by God to list the two most outcast people in the society and declare that if they don't have a place, it's not God's place. Mm. If they don't have a place, it's not God. In fact, if they don't have a special place, because of what they've been through and because of how people have tried to destroy them, then it's not God's place. Listen, listen again, verse 3. Neither let the son of the immigrant that hath joined himself to the Lord say, the Lord has separated me from his people. In other words, when somebody is different, a stranger, I like the word really says stranger because you might not be an immigrant, but sometimes folk can be strange. Sometimes I'm strange. But neither let the son or the daughter of the stranger Say, There's, I've been separated. I, I love the Lord, but I, they won't let me serve the Lord. And then neither let the eunuch say, behold, I'm a dry tree. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuch that keep my Sabbath, the eunuch that wants to please me, the eunuch that wants to take hold of my covenant. Verse 5, even them, look, even them I will give in my house within my walls a place and a name better than the sons of daughter. He, that's like saying, listen, just because you're the church founder doesn't mean you, church, you are in the founding membership doesn't, doesn't, isn't, the, isn't, isn't the end of the goal. Once you found it, sons and daughters, you must go out and bring in even more people, even them, and give them a better name. God was telling his own people, look, I know you pride yourself in being the Hebrews, being the, Israel, being the ones, the sons and daughters of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Sarah and, and, and Rahab. But, 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 but you must understand that I only kept you through slavery and kept you through exile so that you could raise up a place for even them. And you have to bring other folk in them in and not lord your standard over them. Not act as though you are better than them. In fact, you must engage in radical hospitality. And when they come in, you must act like you weren't even having church until they got there. He says, I'll give them an everlasting name that shall never be cut off. Even them. The stranger or the immigrant, those who are different. Those who may not even believe exactly like you. Let me go pretty deep in this morning, but I can swim. A few years ago, I engaged in a service in Philadelphia that was kind of an even them city of refuge. It was a, on a Jewish holy day at a mosque for Muslims that had me as a Christian, part Pentecostal, delivering the message. <laughs> and I had folks say, how can you do that? How could you do that? Go to a Jewish synagogue in a Muslim mosque as a Christian preacher. I said, because I know from the Bible 
there must be a place of refuge for all people. <laughs> now, it was interesting that when we were there, we had to have security because some people, even church folk, were mad about us being together. And what they don't understand is if the holy place doesn't bring the strange folk together, it ain't holy. But then the text says, even them the eunuch. Now, now, now you know eunuch is an interesting word, Bishop Flunder in the Old Testament, but in essence it means those whose sexuality was questioned. Those whose sexuality was quarantined. That's what it literally means in the ancient world. And in the religious cultists, those who had their sexuality was questioned. They were called eunuchs, but they were also despised. They were kept out. And yet here's God saying through the prophet, they must have special refuge. There must be a special place for them whom others question their sexuality. And not only a special place, but there must be a name. And in, in my house, in the city of refuge, in the church of refuge for even them, you can't call people those ugly names of derision and disrespect. Not in the Lord's house, not in the church of refuge, not in the city of refuge. They must be named special. You don't get to call them those terms that the world comes with to make people feel bad and say they're different and they don't matter and they haven't been created by God. No, in the Lord's house, there must be a designation and it cannot be the world's degradation. In the city of refuge, in the church of refuge, you got to call folks, mm, let's see, God's property. Let's see the Lord's heritage. Let's see the saints of the living God. Let's see grace babies and mercy folk. Must be a name where people are no longer derided by what we call them because there is a church of refuge for even them. Then, then there's another thing here. There's another thing here. There's another thing here. A church of refuge or a city of refuge for even them is a non-reversible place. Ah, God. You know, it'd be one thing if you could get in and then folk could put you out. It would be one thing if, if Bishop Flunder gave you grace, but if Bishop Flunder wasn't around, then all the grace would leave. It'd be one thing if, if, if you could come in, but then somebody could render a vote and put you out. But the text says in verses 5, I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. The text says that in God's love for even them, in God's house of prayer, in God's covering of grace and mercy that is for even them, that when God's family is a church of refuge or a city of refuge, no church rule can put you out. No prejudice can cut you off. Nobody's hate can cut you off. Nobody that doesn't like you because of your skin color or your sexuality can cut you off. No Supreme Court can pass a law that'll make God cut you off. No piece of legislation can cut you off. Nothing can cancel the covenant with God's love, grace, mercy, and protection. It's non-reversible. Oh, God, I'm so thankful. God, I'm so thankful because I don't know about you. I haven't done everything right since I've been saved, but I'm so glad it's the non-reversal. There's a place for even them. Non-reversible. Doesn't care what folk think about you. Non-reversal. Doesn't care how much money they have to, to, to run ads against you. You know, I know the history of the city of refuge. I know the history of your pastor, your bishop. I know how when city of refuge was started, people tried to assassinate her. I know what you've gone through, but you're here because once you decided you were going to be a city of refuge, a church of refuge, God put a non-reversible stamp of grace and mercy and protection on your life. But there's one more, there's a few other things. There's another thing, the church of refuge a city of refuge for even them is a resist a place of resistance. It's a resistance place. What do you mean, Bob? I'm glad you asked. It means that 
the very presence of a city of refuge or a church of refuge for ev ev even them is a statement about the sovereignty of God. The very presence of a church of refuge that says we won't even them is a statement about the sovereignty of God. It is a statement about how God made all of us in the image of God. And when there's a church of refuge or a city of refuge, the very presence of the city of refuge or the church of refuge is a protest. It is a resistance to the lies of the world. It is a resistance to the lies of false religion. It is a resistance to the division and the dehumanization of the world. The very presence of a church of refuge for even them says to the empire, says to the rulers of oppression, says to them that you don't get to choose who's in and who's out. <laughs> the very presence of a church of refuge for even them says to the world, you're wrong with your racism. You're wrong with your homophobia. You're wrong with your classism. You're wrong with your power structures and your, and your oppression. You're wrong to mistreat people because they're strangers, they're, uh, because of their immigration status, because of their race, because of their sexuality, because of their sexual preference. You're wrong. Why? Because God said you're wrong. God said, there's a place for even them. It's not some side hut over to the corner. It's right in the midst. It's right at the altar. It's right in the present. It's prime time. The very presence of a city of refuge, the very presence of a church of refuge is a protest to the powers of division and oppression in this world. That's why just can't anything go down in Oakland because <laughs> there's a city of refuge there. It, it Duff can't just go down any kind of way in Oakland because there's a Bishop Flunder there and there's a Church of Refuge there. Stuff can't just go down in California or go down in America or go down in the world. Why? Because God's got these cities of refuge and he's got these Levites and these bishops and these preachers that are, are, are leading these cities and churches of refuge and the very presence of a Church of Refuge is a resistance to the evil of the world. Your very presence says love is more powerful than hate and mercy is greater than meanness and grace is so much greater than spiritual genocide. The very fact that there's a church of refuge and a bishop of a church of refuge for even them, for even them is a sign of protest. It says to the world, you will not get away with dividing people and hurting people. Mm -mm. But then there's another thing. A church of refuge for even them is a repurposing place. Not only is it, not only is a, is it a required place, not only is it an irreversible place, not only is it a, is, is it a, it is present, is a, is a, is a, is a place of resistance. It is a repurposing place. It is here in the church of refuge or the city of refuge that the stranger and the eunuch find out that the abuse and the hurt and the pain you have known because of your strangeness, because of your eunuch status, because of your difference, doesn't have and didn't have the final word over your life. See, what a church of refuge or a city of refuge does, when you come there, it repurposes your life. It says, no, they lied. They lied. You do matter. <laughs> Just as you are, <laughs> without one plea. Oh, yeah, you may have done this. You may have had a child out of way lot. You may be this. You may be according to them. But God made you like that. And let's come on in here and get repurposed. You've been listening to the lies too much. You almost killed yourself because of the lies. You might almost hurt yourself. You were put out of your family because of the lies. You were pushed down. You were told you weren't wanted. But, but, but a church of refuge, a city of refuge said, there he is, a place where even them become instruments in the purposes of God on the earth. There's a place where the pain of even them becomes the power of your witness. 
You come in, you get repurposed so you can talk about the pain you went through so other folk can be delivered. In the church of refuge, our lives are repurposed. All of our gifts are set free. I wonder how many people have sat on gifts because they did not have a church of refuge. They did not have a city of refuge. Thank God for a church of re refuge that says you don't have to sit on your gifts anymore. You don't have to lock them away and deny the power of the Holy Spirit because some folk think the Spirit doesn't run through people like you with your strangeness and your differentness. Because the truth is God made us. No more staying in the shadows, no more staying in the closet, no more feeling unworthy, nor in the church of refuge. Even them are the preachers. Oh God, even them become the Levites, even them become the bishops, even them are the evangelists, even them are the mothers, even them are the deacons, even them are the prophets, the servants, the teachers, the politicians, the witnesses, even them, they walk in the power of the spirit, even them speak the truth. Even them can walk in authority. Even them can lay hands on somebody. What the world says is your deficiency, baby, is actually the very thing that makes you one that God wants because he looks for even them. You get repurposed. Thank God for repurposing. Thank God we didn't die based, what, based on where peop what people said about us. Thank God we didn't die when people said that we should have died. Thank God we didn't die when people said we wouldn't amount to this or that or we couldn't be this or that or God didn't love people like us. Thank God we found a church of refuge, a city of refuge, a bishop of refuge. But then finally, because of all these things, because... It's a required place because it's an un or irreversible place, because it's a place of resistance, and because the church of refuge is a place where our lives get repurposed. The last thing the text says is that's why a church of refuge for even them, oh God, is a rejoicing place. Did y'all hear? It says, even them. <laughs> I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful. So thank God. God has had to make some of us joyful because we went through so much stuff to make us depressed, to make us broke down, to make us hurt, to make us feel like we didn't matter. But when you get in the church of refuge, when you get in the city of refuge, God can make you joyful <laughs> because he preaches you in a house of prayer for all people. He can make it so that you can offer your sacrifices of praise. And, and God says, I'll accept it. I want your praise. I, I want you. And when you find out, let me tell you, and I'm through. I'm through, Bishop. Y'all got some other stuff to do, but I'm through. I'm through. When you find out that the lies are lies, uh, when you find out what Bishop Flunder says all the time, tell the truth and just live. Stop lying to yourself and other folk and just live. When you find out you're not deficient, when you find out God wants you, when you find out God does love you, there is a joy. When you can tell the truth and live, you can be who you are and just live. When you know you don't have to do anything but just come as you are and God loves you right where you are. And a whole lot of things that people have told us is sin. It's not sin. It's just difference. And, and just because they want it to be sin doesn't make it so. When you find out that all the haters in the world can't snatch you out of God's hand because you've got an everlasting covenant and an everlasting name. When you find out that your mama may not have accepted you. Your, your daddy may not have accepted you. Your family may not have accepted you, but, but, but God, but God cares about you and you find it out in the church of refuge, in the city of refuge. In fact, Bishop Flunder, you come out of the old Pentecostal church and you know the hymns every now and then when you find out this true, you start singing stuff that sounds like this. I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. Lay down thy weary one, lay down thy head upon my breast. I came to Jesus just as I was weary, worn, and sad, and I found in him a refuge. I found in him a resting place, and God has made me glad. In fact, in the city of refuge, the church of refuge, there is, uh, there's liberation. There's liberation. The language moves. If you stay in the church of refuge, you'll move from even them to even me. <laughs> even me, Lord. <laughs> Let some blessings fall even on me. I'm so thankful to be in your refuge, God, even me. Where, 
Where I came from, you love even me. Where I have been, you love even me. What I have felt, you eat love even me. What I have done and what others have done to me, even me, Lord. And I thank you, God, that you are a refuge. And I thank you that you love even me. God, even me. Let some drops of your mercy fall even on me. Let some blessings of your power fall even on me. Let some of your grace fall even on me. I'm thankful there's a place at the altar for even me. I thank you there's some blood even for me. I thank you there's some grace even for me. I thank you there's some mercy even for me. And I thank you that when it's all over, there's one more city. There's one more city. There's one more place of refuge. My body won't stay in the grave forever. I don't go down to hell, but I go up to heaven. I thank you. There's one more city. And it says, when it says, when it looks at those coming in the city, it says, who are they? Who are they? And it comes back, these are they. These are even them that, that come up through hard trials and tribulations. They've washed their blood in the, their robes in the blood of the lamb. And I'm still telling you, I want to be there in that crowd. Even me when the saints go marching in even me when every day is Sunday and the Sabbath has no end even me when this life is over even me after toiling through this world but until then I'm going to stay in the city of refuge until then I'm going to stay in the church of refuge until then I'm going to stay in God's grace until Till then, I'm going to stay in God's mercy. And I'm so glad there's a place even for them. I'm so glad there's a place even for me. Because if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I'd know where I'd be. I'd be lost and done. I'd be dead and gone. But I'm so glad there's a refuge for even me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Go ahead and shout in your house. Go ahead and shout by your kitchen table. Go ahead and shout wherever you're listening. Give God a praise for a city of refuge. I know we're on video, but I feel like praising him. Because when I look back over my life, my soul says, how I got over, how I got over. We got over because there's cities of refuge. We got over because his grace is a refuge we got over because his mercy is a refuge we got over because a long time ago the Lord said even them from the foundations of the world even them the ones that the world despises even them the one that the world puts down even them that snobby church folk don't like I'm so glad that there is a place for even them and for even me. God bless your city of refuge. God bless your church of refuge. God bless your bishop of the city of refuge. Keep on serving. Keep on living. Keep on rejoicing because God created you for prime time. In Jesus name. Amen. My God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to, Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless Can we just take Jesus. a moment? Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Bless Lord. Your name, Jesus. Thank you for the affirmation of your word today, God. Hallelujah. Bless Hallelujah. Bless, Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you so much, Bishop Barber. Thank you, and thank you to the organist. It was good to hear a B3 in the background today. <laughs> Glory to God, and thank God for the affirmation yes. of the word of God from this great man of God. Amen. And wherever you are and whatever you do, and stop for a minute yes, and clap those glad hands and give Glory God the praise you, that is due God's name. Bless your name. God bless you, City of Refuge. 29 years. Bless the name of the Lord. 29 years. Glory to Jesus. 29 years. Bless the name of God. Our Hallelujah. faithful God has been on our side. 
Yes. Opening doors, making ways, making provision for ministry, blessing us, Hallelujah. blessing us financially, spiritually, with favor over and over and over again. And when yes. the enemy yes. came in, like a flood, the spirit of God lifted up a standard Hallelujah. against everything that came to destroy us. Great is God. If we don't do anything else today. Hallelujah. Let's rejoice and give God the praise that is due God's name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless, Bless the name of the Lord. Bless I have to say to you, we should be humble. And Hallelujah. we should be humble and grateful to be called to be a city of refuge. Hallelujah. A place where anyone and everyone can run into and be safe. And be safe. I will rejoice. Glory today to God. for God has made me glad and we are called to hold the door open for all who will run in after us hallelujah hallelujah bless the name of the Lord what a privilege Glory what an honor hallelujah Glory what a blessing to, to have this call on our lives God bless you God bless you we will and we have continued to survive and we are obligated to hold the door open for those who will come after us. What a blessing. We are grateful to Bishop William Barber. Grateful, grateful, grateful. He is a brother and he is a very, very, very dear friend. We are going to move to a time of prayer. And I love the passage again in Philippians 4 and 6 that says, be anxious for nothing. Don't have anxiety about anything. Mm. No matter whether you hear it on CNN or Fox News or MSNBC, be anxious for nothing. Don't have anxiety about anything. But in everything, in all things, through prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God. And here's the promise and the peace of God that passes understanding, hallelujah. hallelujah, will keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. That is the promise. That is the promise. The presence of faith is the absence of fear. Yes. We are praying today. We're praying for Bishop Greenlee and the loss of his uncle Ernest, and also for the glory of uh, glory to glory membership in the loss of Tracy Rogers, faithful member of the church, just passed away. Praying for Elder Tanya and family in the loss of her uncle. Praying for our own Bishop Tony Manriquez, who is hospitalized in Tijuana, Mexico. Mm -hmm. Praying for him. He sent word. We're praying that God will bless him and strengthen him yes. in this time. Yes. Yes. Family of longtime friend, Mother Doris Curry, dear friend of Mother Martha Goring, but a good friend of ours from the years at Hamilton Memorial, who died suddenly in the last week. We lift, we lift up the health and hearts and minds yes. of our TFAM members in the Nairobi Church, Cosmopolitan Affirming Church, as they deal with the presence of COVID-19 in their congregation. We're praying today for all of our TFAM pastors and congregations for their perseverance through the pandemic, virtual worship, praying that God will keep their members safe and they are working to keep their members safe. Yes. Praying that all of the services that they are providing in community will continue. They are being the church all over this country and we're praying for you pastors, and we're praying for you leaders. We go to God today on behalf of Pastor Victoria Burson for healing as she moves into the treatment phase for a reoccurring cancer, praying for Bishop Phyllis Panese that her healing will continue in the presence of some kidney stones. We know God has something for all of that. Praying for Bishop Bonnie Radden, for Bishop Greenlee for sustained healing. Praying for the Elbaum family who is dealing with family loss and COVID diagnosis. 
praying for the family of Coach Lamar Williams, an educator who was murdered in San Francisco. Sending prayers of encouragement and healing to Noah James, who is in the hospital dealing with sickle cell anemia. Praying for healing of the body and mind for Cheryl Williams. This week, there was a 15-year-old student at Mission High School who took their life. Praying for the family and lifting up many of our youth and young adults who are dealing with mental health issues exacerbated by this COVID reality and homeschooling and being out of social circles and considering suicide in this complicated time. We are praying. We are praying that the prayers of the saints and the power of God and the shield of God will cover their minds and their hearts. There's a better day coming, beloved. Hold on. There is a better day coming. Praying for Lawrence Martin Sr. and the family who is dealing with blood clots and infections. Praying for the demilitarization of the system of policing in our cities, in our nations, which is often exacerbated by the current administration. We are also lifting up Ken Jones, Kenneth Jones, killed by police this week, as well as the men and women we have not heard about. And we are continuing to send prayers of recovery for lay pastor RJ and prayers of recovery for Deacon Ken Jones. Prayers of comfort and peace to my own brother, Deacon Leonard Connor. Prayers for even those that we don't have prayer requests for. God sees you, yes. God knows you intimately, such that God has the hairs on your head numbered. Hmm. There is nothing that is outside of God's purview and God's ability. And whether we are healed into this life or healed from this life into the next, yes. our God is a great healer yes. Yes. and a great deliverer. And we're going to together trust God now in prayer. Hallelujah. I encourage you, let's pray together. And now gracious God, by all of your many names and all of your beautiful and magnificent manifestations, yes, 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 God. we bless you today for being our helper and our keeper, yes, our strength. Yes. Thank you today for the ways in which you have provided for us in oh, this complicated, and sometimes seemingly insurmountable time that we are in. You have been our provider, our way maker. You provided us with shelter and with food and with friends and with community. And you have encouraged our hearts so that we could encourage our bodies to thrive. You have blessed us with courage and faith and fortitude. To press on, as the old folks said, and see what the end's going to be. Hallelujah. And in this peculiar political atmosphere, you gave us the strength, like the psalmist, to look to the hills from whence cometh our help, because our help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Hallelujah. We bless you because you've been our present help in trouble. And today, we lift up to you our kin all over this area, all over this country, all over this world. Yes, Lord. Prayers for healing for bodies, minds, and spirits. Let it be so, Lord. Prayers for strength in the loss of loved ones. Prayers for our children and for our youth. Prayers for our cities. Prayers, oh God, for our country and nations and the nations of the world. Prayers. Prayers that the enemy will not be released and unleashed on our cities. Prayers against those who would bring violence and trouble and and anxiety Mm. and war in our nation. Prayers, oh God, prayers are going up before you today because we trust you. You are able still to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. Now touch God. Touch Bishop Barber, 
and our family in North Carolina tr touch the people's, the poor people's campaign yes. and repairers of the breach. Let a, an anointing fall upon that leadership and bless them for the hand that they have had in bringing yes. people out to vote who thought that their vote wouldn't matter. Bless them, oh God, and strengthen them. Bless our sister Stacey Abrams today yes. and those who work with her in all of the areas that they are in in Georgia. Bless Bless and strengthen the hand of those that carry justice until justice runs down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Bless yes. and give strength to those who are making proper and wise and godly decisions yes. that give the people's vote power and strength in a time like this. Yes. We come against the enemy that brings derision and division and yes. hatred. Yes. God, you are the one who holds our breath. Yes. Hallelujah. Strengthen and enable, oh God, the wind of justice to blow across this nation until yes. justice runs down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Yes. And God, we pray as City of Refuge moves now into its 30th year, oh God, uh. you who called us late in the night one night, and said that we must form, we must give birth. Yes. We remember, Mother Miller and I, what it was to be in the birthing room yes. and to give birth to this incredible, powerful, far-reaching, yes. life-changing, yes. time-shifting yes. ministry. We stand grateful and deeply humble. Yes, Lord. And as we enter into our 30th year, great God, we pray that you will cause us to be even more present, yes. to lift up your name, your hand, your intention, oh, your God. power, your anointing, yes. your healing. Yes, Lord. To all of those and particularly those who have felt in any way mm. outside of grace and outside of the body of Christ. Mighty. And outside, oh God, of family yes. and friends, God, I pray that our light will stay on yes. and that they will just look to the light and follow the light yes. and be healed and helped. And because you've been faithful for 29 years, Hallelujah. we have no reason to believe that you won't be faithful for oh, 29 more. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Let it be so in the yes. strong and powerful name of Jesus. And in the name of all that is pure and right and holy and divine. And the people of God say, amen, amen, amen. amen. and praise God. God bless amen. you as my prayer. I'm Pastor Tony from City of Refuge, United Church of Christ. <laughs> uh, we do bless God today for these messages we've received. The word of God and the whole kingdom of God is for even them, even us, even me, and even you. And again, we should fear for nothing. It's our wish at City of Refuge to offer our best in hospitality in community and in relationship. The greatest of these is relationship, a relationship with your creator, the ultimate embrace of love and safety one can ask for. It doesn't matter your background, your education, your affections, your finances, your affiliations, your various identifications, your gender presentations, nothing can separate you from the love of Jesus who is our Christ. And if you're so inclined to accept the offer of relationship with Christ, we ask that you acknowledge that RSVP at the table of life by typing hashtag Jesus. That is hashtag J-E-S-U-S -S in the comment section. Yes, hashtag Jesus, because there's nothing to be said when you call on Christ. Enter your message and one of our ministers will be in contact with you. We welcome you home. And speaking of home, 
Maybe you don't have a church home or a supportive community or a supportive somewhere to worship. And now you're here. You have questions or you need shoulders to lean on. We invite you to become part of the City of Refuge United Church of Christ community, both locally and abroad. You are welcome here. You are welcome here. Just type home, hashtag home, hashtag H-O-M-E in the comment section and our new members department, and that would be lay pastor Raymond Glover and other people from our new members department will follow up with you for your official welcome. Blessings from the City of Refuge United Church of Christ. Thank you, Bishop William Barber. Thank you, Bishop Yvette Flunder. Thank you, Mother Shirley Miller. And welcome home, everybody. And now we present to you again, our own Bishop Yvette A. Flunder. Thank you so much, Pastor Tony. I, I just have no idea wh what I would do and how I would do if it were not for the shepherd's table of City of Refuge. Yes. I am a blessed, very blessed pastor. And I thought that before we leave today, we would hear something from Mother Miller. <laughs> we, we are co-parents <laughs> of a vision. And I feel so blessed, not only to have had that opportunity with her, but that she is still with me. I praise God for her health. So she's going to have our closing remarks today. Amen. I just want to say, first of all, give praise to God and for all that he has done. I, it just doesn't seem like it's been 29 years ago that we got together and that this ministry was birthed and that God gave us such grace and uh, yes. such power to forge ahead to something that we had no idea what it was going to be like. And we said yes. And because of our yes, I look back over the years and it's just such a blessing in my life and it has brought me joy. I appreciate the, the message today was just so powerful and spoke so to my life yes. and uh, put me in remembrance of what it is that God has done in and through our lives together, Refuge. I love you all. And I just appreciate each one of you and every place that you hold in this ministry. God does not forget even the details. Some of us forget the details. I'm coming along in that time of life when I forget the details about a lot of things. <laughs> but oh, I thank God that he remembers all of it. And he remembers the things that we have forgotten yes. and is yet blessing us for the commitments that we have made and the things that we have followed through on. And I just want to uh, lift you up today and let you know that you are loved. Yes. You are loved. Yes. And you are loved by me and you're in my prayers. I hold you up, yes. City of Refuge. Yes. God bless you all. We love you. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Can, can we unmic ourselves, unmute ourselves, and make noise for a minute? Happy, <laughs> Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Hey, hey. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Oh. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. I love you. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to all of our people everywhere. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. One more thing coming. Amen. As we thank God for you, Bishop Flunder and Mother Miller, and your obedience to God's master plan for the City of Refuge UCC over the past 29 years, we look forward to the vast places God is taking our ministry in our 30th. Who would have thought 29 years ago, as we pressed toward the mark and our mission, showing the love of Christ to all, that we would have found the inclusion in the history of the black church that we've advocated for, for so many through the years. We bless God for room at the table. 
We want you at the table in the planning of our 30th year anniversary celebrations as we move forward in and by the power of God in a spectacular way. Please contact lay pastor Marilyn Susu Fowler or Pastor Ann Jefferson to become a part of the dynamic preparation team for we have much to celebrate. We look, we ask that you take a look at the upcoming PBS documentary, The Black Church by Dr. Lewis Henry Skip Gates of the Finding Your Roots television series who graciously came by the City of Refuge UCC and included us in. Check your local listings for The Black Church which will be premiering in February 2021 during Black History Month. But here is a quick preview of what's to come. This is our story. Jesus today, oh God, we are rising. The black church was more than just a spiritual home. It was the epic center of black life. Out of it came our black businesses, our black educational institutions. The black church gave people a sense of value, belonging, and worthiness. I don't know how we could have survived as a people without it. To tell the story of American religion is to tell a political story. The black church helped us to withstand all the slings and arrows of segregation and the segregationists. We're willing to be beaten for democracy. Freedom! Who are the five great black preachers of all time? There's so many. Prathia Hall. Renita Weems. We serve a Jesus who came and turned over the tables. Jeremiah Wright. Gardner Taylor. Gardner Taylor. Howard Thurman. I left our oldest Moss. Presiding Bishop Michael Curry. Love can be sacrificial. Did you think that you were going to get one amen out of those Brits? I learned how to see amens in their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to clap my hands. I'm going to Lord. Some might argue that black church is the first black theater. The role of music in the black church is everything. How do you define gospel music? Oh, really simple. Gospel music is the sonic presentation that talks about the majesty of Jesus. Entertainment shouldn't be in the church. What do you think the preacher does? Yeah, you hate the preacher, hand there, uh, yeah. hand there, uh, 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 what, that's entertainment. <laughs> The African-American church is 80 to 90 percent women, but the leadership is 80 to 90 percent male. There's an awful price to pay when you say that you're a same gender loving person. If you say you were born this way, then you're saying, God, you're a liar. We are a testament to the goodness and the grace of God. Everything in the world has tried to kill us and we're still here. Culture says you're the wrong race. The price says I made your race, and I ain't made no mistake. It was our bomb in Gilead, the place where our people made a way out of nowhere. It was that place from which our souls could look back and wonder how we got over. We call it the church. Look at God. Yes. We thank you for celebrating with us and pray that you have been encouraged and blessed by our 29th year anniversary weekend. Please like and share today's service. If you are a first time visitor, let us know in the comment section of your platform with hashtag visitor. Hashtag Jesus if you are accepting a relationship with Jesus Christ today. Or perhaps you'd like to become a part of this community. Hashtag home is all you need to write. A member of our welcoming team will be contacting you shortly via Facebook Messenger for your contact information and to move you forward. 
If you are watching this service outside of our live broadcasting time and you can't wait until next Sunday to join, just send us an email to cor.refugee at gmail.com. Welcome home. Bishop Flunder, Mother Miller, and the City of Refuge Ministries want to hear from you. So please send us your prayer requests, comments, or questions via Instagram at a Refuge UCC, Twitter and Facebook at City of Refuge UCC. If you'd like to partner with this ministry and aid in our efforts both locally and internationally, you can use Cash App at dollar sign C-O-R-U-C-C, PayPal at paypal.me forward slash C-O-R-U-C-C, and text to give at 510 510- 257-9001. 29 years of refuge, a city of compassion for everyone. We celebrate you, family. And as we leave, we leave with a special treat. Our bishop, leading through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Grace and blessings. Have a wonderful week.
love it for a minute. If I never had these problems, oh come on now. If I never had these problems. Hallelujah, and tell them through it all. Tell them again, say through.